Hey everybody, I'm Logan Alec. I'm a CPA on Choice Tax Relief, and today I'm going to be answering a very simple general question. What should I do if I can't afford to pay my taxes this year? And that's exactly what I had the opportunity uh, to talk to CNET about recently uh, in this article, Got a Big Tax Bill, What to Do If You Can't Afford to Pay Your Taxes According to a CPA, who was a CPA they talked to. Uh, that was me. It's yours truly. Yes, I talked to uh, Daisha here at CNET um, a bit about you know what to do if you can't afford to pay your tax bill, and uh, there I am. So sorry if this video is a little bit braggy, but I you know I did. I told Daisha, look, I, I share this video on my YouTube channel, and I think it'll be helpful for a lot of you folks uh, out there as well. Um, so okay, <clears throat> da, 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 da. so first so first things first thing to talk about. Okay, don't. Even if you know you're going to owe the IRS this year when you file your tax return, don't delay filing your taxes, okay? Even if you know you're not going to be able to afford your taxes. And, and why is this? Well, you know, I, 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 it's in the article. I told Daisha this. Um, the penalties are greater if you do not file your tax return and also don't pay than if you do file your tax return but don't pay, okay? The failure to pay penalty... That is the penalty the IRS uh, assesses for not paying your taxes on time. And the deadline for most folks is April 15th, right? For, for last year's taxes, they're due by April 15th of this year, okay? If you don't pay them by April 15th, the IRS is going to charge you half a percent a month or part of a month uh, that you haven't paid your taxes in, right? So if you owe $10,000 right? And that's your tax bill. And you don't pay it in by April 15th, the IRS is going to charge you what's 0.5% of $10,000. Um, it's $50, right? So $50 a month uh, for every month or part of a month that you don't pay that tax bill. Okay. So uh, that's how that works. But the uh, failure to file penalty, which is the penalty if you don't file your tax return by the due date, which is generally April 15th, or if you get an extension, October 15th. That is not half a percent a month, 0.5% a month. That is 5% of the balance due per month or part of a month uh, that the, the tax return is late, right? Uh, so what's 5% of 10,000? 5% of 10,000 is $500 a month or part of a month. Now, both of these penalties max out at 25%. Okay, so let's let me just put that out there. But you're going to max out that 5% a month fair to file penalty a lot quicker than you're going to max out that fair to pay penalty. Okay. And if both penalties are running at the same time, uh, the fair to file penalty is reduced by the fair to pay penalty. Right. So that's kind of a technicality there. But, uh, so that, that's what I got into here with, uh, with Daisha in this article. Um, so basically, yes, as the head, as the, the, the heading here says, don't delay filing your taxes, even if you can afford to pay. Right. Um, now, uh, okay. So let's say you file your tax return, you see you owe, um, what's the, I guess, the first <laughs> thing you should maybe consider, right? First thing you may want to consider, if you, if you know you're going to be able to afford to pay your taxes, you know, in the short term, is set up a payment plan with the IRS, okay? Um, they're, they'll generally let you um, get a short-term payment plan uh, that lets you pay the debt in full within six months if you owe $100,000 or less, okay? No fee to set that up but you got to pay it off within six months, okay? Um, if you can't afford to pay uh, what you owe in six months, consider setting up a long-term payment plan with the IRS. That's what I talk about here, okay? Um, if you owe $50,000 or less, uh, you can go online and set it up. The amount might not be as low as you'd want it to if you actually kind of negotiated with the IRS yourself what you want to pay, but you can still do it online. If you owe more than fifty thousand uh, dollars, you're not going to be able to set it up online. You're going to either have to fax your petition for an installment agreement in, or talk to somebody at the IRS. And this is where taxpayers can really shoot themselves in the foot because they volunteer information to the IRS that tells the IRS that hey, we can collect from these these folks a lot faster uh, than than they want to pay us, right? Um, what? Let's see. Okay. Um, Next thing I talked to Daisha about was seeing if you qualify for hardship assistance, right? So this is uh, an installment agreement is uh, an agreement to pay the IRS over time, right? And so 
you know, if, if, if you know you'll be able to afford to pay the IRS what you owe, that's probably the best you're going to get with them, right? However, if you really can't afford to pay what you owe, you might qualify for a hardship-based resolution. So those are things uh, like offers and compromise, which is an agreement with the government to sell your tax debt for less than you owe. That could be something uh, like currently non-collectible status, which is a temporary pause uh, on, on IRS collections activities, meaning they can't go after you. Uh, they can't make you pay them money. Uh, it could be uh, a hardship-based installment agreement, like a partial payment installment agreement, right? This is where you say, okay, IRS, I'm gonna pay you a certain amount of money every month, but it's not going to fully pay off my debt in the long run, right? Before the IRS's tenure collection statute to collect the debt expires, right? So that's what I talk about here. Like I say, um, you know, it's it's a fight with them, man. And, and this is what we do, like I, uh, you know, day in and day out for clients. You know, they don't hand out these hardship-based uh, resolutions like candy, and many people are are denied for them, right? Uh, you got to really prove it with bank statements, bills. Uh, pay stubs, all the ammunition there with documentation uh, to show that you 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 know that the, that you're basically a stone, and the IRS isn't going to be able to squeeze blood or very much blood out of you. And by blood, I mean money in this context, right? Then we talked about you know the offer and compromise program and and things like that. Um, obviously, on this channel, I, I go into offers and compromise quite uh, a lot, as well as the other IRS hardship-based resolutions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Finally, of course, don't ignore IRS notices, uh, especially the ones that come via certified mail, right? Those are the ones that are generally statutorily required, and some of them have a deadline attached to them to respond to them. Uh, or the IRS may start taking levy activity against you, which means garnishing your wages, uh, levying your um, uh, bank account, things like that. And I did mention this to Daisha. This is, you know, I've said this a lot on the, ch on the channel, uh, but it's important to know. Well, most creditors, right, they have to go through the court system and get a money judgment against you to actually, you know, levy your bank account, garnish your wages. The IRS doesn't have to do that. It has to give you sufficient notice. I've talked about these notices in other videos, but they don't have to go and get a money judgment or something like that from the court in order to uh, drain money out of your bank account or garnish your wages. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, yeah, so like, so uh, they can also file a notice of federal tax lien against you. A notice of federal tax lien is basically a notice in county records saying that you owe the IRS money. And so if you were to say sell an asset like a house or something, the IRS would get uh, the proceeds up to the lien amount before you do. Okay, um, we get I get we get asked this all the time at Choice Tax Relief. Um, do tax liens appear on my credit report? The answer is no. I've made a video about that here on the channel. I also talked about that uh, with Daisha. Other options for paying your tax bill. Uh, yeah, you could use a credit card, right? Uh, you know, some credit cards have a 0% APR, right? For the first like 18 or 12 or 24 months or something like that. You know, it's just, uh, I, I, you see people get in trouble with those, right? Because, you know, they, they think they're going to be able to pay it off, right? When that 18th month or that 24 month hit, 24th month hits, but then they're not able to. And then now they're paying, you know, 25% or whatever APR on the credit card, right? Which is worse than, you know, owing the IRS money, right? In terms of the interest rate and things like that. So, um, yeah. And like she said, you, sh you should cover your tax both a credit card only if you know you can repay the balance, right? Or before the introductory APR period expires. Um, you know, personal loan, right? Pulling from savings, obviously. So, yeah. Um, that's just obviously very, at a very high level, general, what should I do if I can't pay my taxes? Obviously, I've, I have a ton of other videos on this channel that goes more in depth on all these things. But, you know, because I helped uh, Daisha out with this article for CNET, uh, I thought I should cover it here on the channel just to give a very basic, basic answer to the question, what should I do if I can't pay my taxes? Some of those more in-depth videos uh, on what to do if you can't pay your taxes are right here on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you owe the IRS at least $10,000 or your state, you qualify for a free consultation with, with us at Choice Tax Relief. You can visit us at choicetaxrelief.com, fill out the form on our homepage, or give us a call at 866-8000-TAX uh, to schedule that free consultation. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.